Why is there homework? Homework exists primarily as a means to reinforce the lessons learned in a classroom setting. The thinking behind it is that the concepts and ideas first presented by a teacher will be better understood if a student does related work on his or her own. Is homework truly effective? A hotly debated topic, the validity of homework's effectiveness is constantly being questioned by today's overly involved parents. There have been dozens of studies into this topic, the results of which lend support to both arguments. So where does this leave us? Well, some studies point to the conclusion that the marginal benefit of homework doesn't exceed the strain it can put on a child and his or her family. There is also evidence that suggests homework will cause a child to become bitter towards learning, a trend which could cause regression in their growth as an adult. Others, on the opposite side of the issue, say that a lack of challenging homework will cause a child to atrophy intellectually and become unmotivated. They'll also say that, the, that stopping homework wholesale will leave our youth totally unprepared for college life and the demand of a weakened economy. This begs the question of where the homework sweet spot lies. Is there a pocket in the middle of the homework debate where the optimum level lies? Some experts think so. They say that homework that caters to the abilities of the individual student has proven a highly effective means of learning and reinforcement in specific cases. Abandoning the long-held shotgun approach of printing off a uniform worksheet for every student would serve to help a student grow incrementally. Our best option is not wholesale abandonment of homework, but rather a ref reformation of how it is used. Homework is a double-edged sword in that it is has proven both beneficial and harmful in relatively equal measure. Our goal should be to dull the sword to the point where the least harm is done while achieving the maximum benefit. This report has been brought to you by Batteries. Batteries. One excuse teachers use about giving homework is that it helps prepare students for tests. But in reality, why are there tests? Are tests really an accurate measure of a student's knowledge? According to some educators, too much homework can actually lead to lower test scores. Countries such as Japan, the Czech Republic, and Denmark assign less homework than most countries and have test scores that are well above the international average. American students actually do more homework than most countries and still only score around the international average. As for tests being necessary, many academic administrators say tests are not only used to test the knowledge of the students, but the competency of the teachers. However, there are other obvious ways to test teachers, such as more classroom observations. Having administrators sit in on actual classes is the only way to truly evaluate the competency of a teacher. After President Bush passed the No Child Left Behind Act in 2001, the focus of teachers and administrators shifted from individual learning to a teach-to-the-test mentality. This was so schools could get, continue to get government funding. So in the end, education has become about money and is putting children at risk of losing their creative capabilities just to pass some tests that don't accurately measure intelligence. In many cases, homework can be repetitive or just busy work. While it can benefit students, such as teaching them how to remember things through different techniques, helping them get better grades and exams, and teaching them how to think in a linear manner, it in many cases is not beneficial. For example, it may seem boring to many students, causing them to be against homework. It also takes up a lot of time. This is a problem because it takes up time that students could use towards assignments that need a lot of thought process, such as projects, and it takes away time students could use for preparation for college. One main problem with repetitive homework is it stifles the creativity of a student because it does not show them how to be intuitive. Another issue is it is not beneficial to the students who already know the topic that the homework is about. Repetitive homework may also be a strong point for those who put in the effort, but not for those who do not. For example, someone may be better at math, however, another person can have a higher grade because they are better at repetitive homework and stating facts. The effects of repetitive homework are it does not teach students how to think for themselves, it only teaches them how to state facts. Another effect is it hinders the ability for students to develop their own opinion, therefore they will not be as successful in college or in their career. When students become adults, they will have, they will have the tendency to repeat habits they have grown accustomed to. 
For example, if a student has the tendency to rush through their homework, they will rush through their work in college or in their job and will not be as successful. Repetitive work also does not help problem-solving skills, not only for things pertaining to school, but it will affect the student's entire lifestyle. To prevent repetitive homework, teachers can assign more long-term assignments that are less repetitive and can be easily managed as far as time. For example, a project that involves a lot of what was being taught in class. However, students may use that knowledge to look at a bigger picture rather than repeating things they've learned in class. Another way to prevent repetitive homework is if practice is needed in a topic, only a few repetitive problems or questions can be assigned rather than large amounts. Lastly, repetitive homework can be optional for students who do not fully understand the topic. With teachers becoming increasingly more or oriented, where apparent practice makes perfect, students are quickly losing the personal attention of teachers, especially at a young age. Teachers need to stop following the same set of rules and start following what their students need. Constant repetition will only get students so far as to remember what a nuisance the teacher or class is, which can drastically change their view on school. Teachers need to find alternative ways for their students to practice the material. One way could be each student is in charge of class presentations. Then after the presentation, other students give their input on the class material. Students generally will be more honest with each other than the teacher, so why not have them teach each other? Projects occasionally work, but if the group working together do not get along or are full of procrastinators, the project will prove difficult and annoying. Instead, teachers can try smaller, in-class projects where they have deadlines for each small part so that they know who is and who isn't progressing well through the activity. The biggest problem teachers can face are the class becoming too boring or too busy. No student wants to stay with one topic or project for a month waiting to move on. Teachers can keep all students properly engaged in a slower topic by offering new, harder material to the accelerated students and personally assisting the students who have more trouble. The students who are not progressing as fast will see the effort the teacher puts in to help them, and in return will try and work hard to learn the material. Other ways teachers can prevent classroom boredom is by taking an entire month and laying out what will be due and when. This way, everyone can progress at their own pace to complete the assignments by the deadline. Now these assignments may, may not bore the student, but they also should not overwhelm the student. Teachers try to keep students busy, but they also have to understand that school is not a student's entire life. Most students in high school are involved in sports, music, or have jobs that they work at, and they will often put those at a higher priority than school. While school also is on their agenda, they often will not get to homework until late at night, and giving them large workloads will just leave them with a pile of homework they will never touch. Not requiring homework is the easiest way to do this. Simply have quizzes and tests on the unit work, and suggest the homework will help them better understand it, but do not force it on them.